All right, Shalom. <clears throat> First and foremost, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakah Kodash, which is all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, which name the Heavenly Father. Bahasham is in the name, Ba in Ha the Sham name. Yahweh Shai is the one begotten son, and Rakah Kodash means Holy Spirit, literally translated Spirit Holy. Racha spirit, Quadash holy. All right, Qua, not Kadash. All right. Double honest of the apostles, Elder Great Millstone, and South Asian brothers doing this thing in sincerity, and truth, and with charity. So um, yeah, just gonna hop right into it. You know, uh, refresh you on the, the the four horses in Revelation six. Revelation six and one. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and, be and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and the crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And of course, we know this is how it's shy. But let's grab um, some precepts. Let's start with this. It may be the same section, though. This is Revelation 19. Yeah, and, and uh, 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war, go on to conquer. All right? His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with the... And this doesn't mean that the name of the Lord, that the elect doesn't have it. Okay? Uh, 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 which, translate, which translation is it? But it says, they uh, themselves. Because the, the prophets, the elect, is the one with Yahweh Shai, you know? That's the body of Yahweh Shai, to be exact. Let's see. Well, am I messing this up with um other verse? Nevertheless, the rest of that all remains the same. The elect has that name, you know. The elect has the hidden manner. Acts 4 and 12. All right. Uh, the, the lamp, the, uh, the, uh. Right, you have the elect that followed the lamb with the 12 he goes, Revelation 14, 4. Chapter. I'll do it this way. It's the first verse. Oh, I've look, I went right to it. Is um Revelation fourteen one, and I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him one hundred forty four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Right. All right, here we go in the CSB. Then I looked, and there was the lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him one hundred forty four thousand, who had his name, and his father's name written on their foreheads. So I think I was. Mixing that one up with this one. But as you know, it's, it's both. It's, it, you know, you got both the names. You can't have one after the other. ESV says the same thing. So does the NLT. <laughs> My 
Most of these, you know. So that so there you go. You can't have you well, you can't get to the father without the son. All right. And again, we're one with Yahweh Shai. We, we the church is the body of Yahweh Shai. And you can just search and find that precept yourself. I believe it's in Galatians. Um, so back to Revelation 19. Damn, I still I still think it was a translation. Unless I am just putting them both together. Hmm. So yeah, I, I guess I think I was confusing with the fourteen and one. Nevertheless, it all remains true. Of course, we have the name. We don't get saved without it. All right. <laughs> Acts four and twelve is is uh evident, man. All right, it's self explanatory. We don't get saved without it. Amos three and seven, you know, the Lord revealed the secrets to a servant, the prophet. So we do still have the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. We can't get saved without it. Proverbs eighteen ten and a whole slew of other precepts. Okay. Um, he was clothed with a vesture dips. Essentially, our Lord, you know. He hid himself for a period, but now he's re he's revealing himself. You know, and he was clothed with the vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And uh, the armies which in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth the sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with the rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the Almighty. So that's the white horse. This is how was shot. Coming to conquer, all right. He's the he's the end. He's the 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 end all to all of this, man. So back in Revelation six, and um, three, yeah. And when he opened the second seal, I heard a second beast say, "Come and see." And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that set thereon to take peace from the earth. And that they should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. Well, who who uh for one who's in power now? Alright. Who's in power now? That took peace from the earth, Esau Edom, the so called white man who's really red. But let's get what the sword is. Okay, Genesis 27, let's slide here.
39. And Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, that, this is the blessing of Esau, 38. And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. <laughs> and Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, thy darling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shalt thou live, and shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass, when thou shalt have the dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. So, in order for Esau to get in power, before Esau got in power, he would have to leave the yoke or captivity, being a subject unto Israel. In this case, it was the, uh, the southern kingdom. And then he will be, start his rise to power, which is exactly what happened. And got from under the Judites, and then he began his rise to power. So planning his way in there the best he could, you know, trying to take over the Persian Empire. It didn't work until it was the Greek Empire he took over and then called himself Greek and then became the Romans. And fast forward, here we are now. Okay? But he got this dominion after he broke free from under Judah. In fact, he had to do it again after the Dark Ages. He broke free and then got this this big power now, well, this is really truly fulfilled all the way. Because now he's got the do of heaven door. I mean, he rules every fucking thing. But before this happened, what happened? They were, the Byzantine Empire happened. Esau was put uh, basically subject to Jake. And when they were subject to Jake, what did they do, man? They went and fled into the Caucasus Mountains. All right. Then a thousand years, you know, went by what niggas ruled and... Esau got got out of uh, them caves and took back over. That's Malachi 1 and 4. They were rebuilt. And that's what they came and did. They rebuilt. Okay? So, um... They got... They supplanted the Moors and then got the papacy and rebuilt. So, back in Genesis 27 <clears throat> and 40... And by thy sword shalt thou live and shall serve thy brother. And he will get all this power by the sword. Okay? They went and conquered the fucking planet, man. Point blank period. They got this through by the sword. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And that was the point, you know. That was the point. And why is he called red? I mean, he's the red man. Genesis 25, 25. Mm. The first came out red <laughs> all over like in hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. That's plain. And then it goes to say, and after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob, and Isaac was three score years old when she buried them. All right, which it didn't mention Jacob's uh, physical features because he looked normal. Esau came out no melanin, came out red. All right, that, that was different. He's the real one. All right, and also he's a criminal. Which is why he had that mark. He's a criminal. All right. Um, it's an Isaiah. Let's say crimson or red. Let's do it like this. Let's start with scarlet. Yeah. This <laughs> is both. <laughs> Isaiah 1 and 18. Come now and let us reason together, saith Yahweh. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So wickedness, you know, and that's the word crim uh, uh, criminal even means. You know, it goes back to the word uh, crimson. You have the sin caught red-handed. All right, the blood is on your hand. You're a criminal. You you you're the criminal. All right. So this is Esau, that man of sin. 
As we know, there is a man that rules sin. That is Esau. Um, yeah, let me get the Malachi. This is Malachi 1 and 4, actually. I end up getting it. Whereas Edom said we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus said, yeah, it's like it. Thus said the high of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. They shall call them the board of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord indignation forever. So Edom is the board of wickedness. He is the rule of sin. He is the man of sin mentioned in 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Okay? So Edom is that son of perdition. He is that man of sin. <laughs> we just read the Malachi 1, which lets you know he is that board of wickedness, which it tells you right here, this is who's in power. 2 Thessalonians 2, and uh, we jump down to verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now let it will let until be taken out the way. So Esau was in power, or this, this son of perdition was already in power, but it wasn't time for him to be taken out of the way. It was already, the mystery was already at work, but it wasn't time. Well, now it's time. He's being revealed. Verse 8. And then shall that wicked, the red one, the crimson one, the scarlet one, be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Okay? He is the scarlet one. In fact, I'm tripping. How can I forget to grab this? Revelation. Was it another one? I think about two. All right, this is Revelation um seventeen and three. So he carried me away in his spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. Full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. All right? Which is uh, Rome, but really, you know, Rome 2.0, which is America, ruling with the EU and NATO. All right? That's the seven heads and ten horns. The woman is America. But these are all the same people. These are the Edomites, man. Covered in scarlet, because that's who they are. The wicked one, the man of sin. Okay? The red horse. With the great sword that took peace from the earth. Okay? The last beast in Daniel. The seventh chapter. Because the end comes when this beast goes down. Well, the end comes when Revelation and that beast goes down. It's the same thing. The beast whose deadly wound was healed. America's the little horn in Daniel 7. All right. The beast whose deadly wound was healed is, Rev is, is Rome coming back. It's the Malachi 1 again. Let us rebuild the desolate places, man. So what happened? Rome fell. It became the Holy Roman Empire, or you can call it the Byzantine Empire, which essentially just means, or the Dark Ages, which means niggas took over. All right. And once niggas took over, they had a thousand years where the devil was, was put into prison. We're just talking about Edom again. And what happened? <laughs> His ass came out a thousand years later and, and conquered, man. And took peace from the earth. And deceived the nations. Got them to drink his wine, his, his deceit, his lies. This Daniel 7. In um, 7, after this, I saw one of the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth, it devoured and broke in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was di diverse from all the beasts that were before it, 
and it had ten horns. It's the same thing in Revelation. This is Rome. Point, point blank, period, simple as that. What, like what? I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in his in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man of man, and a mouth speaking great things. With a little horn is America, and we know America was formed from Spain, Spain, Britain, and France. All right. Spain, Britain, and France. You know, Britain had the East Coast. France had a lot of the South. And uh, Spain had, what, the West slash Southwest. All right? And, be, and they, they got to, and now we here, you know. Louisiana Purchase, uh, uh, the Independence War, whatever the fuck it was called. What the fuck was it called? Damn, I'm t- that's not the war. The, is it the Revolutionary War? The war where America so-called freedom sl- sl- sells from Britain. Damn. This is a big-ass brain fart. The Revolutionary War. They got to be it, right? Google it. <laughs> I'm going to Google after this lesson. I feel like a damn tard not remembering this. But nevertheless, um, the flesh is weird. Um... Yeah. So, um, that's that. This is the red horse. Now, back in Revelation 6, and 4 again. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. All right. And they and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. And another key point in here is the uh they should kill one another. Alright, which these world wars, they call world wars, you know, you did have uh Different countries to ally with either side, like Japan joining in. But essentially, this was Europeans fighting each other, man. This was Edomites fighting each other. France, Germany, Russia, America, Europe. All right? The two world wars was Edomites fighting each other. For the most part. All right? And that goes to the gospel. What does it say? If Satan be divided against Satan. They was fucking each other up, man. They, and they finna do it again. Okay? So, verse 5. And he opened the third seal. I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hands. And um, when you go into this word balances... Zoot ghost. Strong's G twenty two eighteen. Zugas. 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 It's been a minute, you know, and looked it up in a while. Zugas. Zugas. Duhas. <laughs> um, a yoke. A yoke that is put on draw cattle. Metaphorically used of any burden or bondage as that of slavery. All right. So it's going into a yoke of the, the slavery It's telling you what it's going into is slavery. It's a yoke. Well, who does who does this yoke represent or what does this yoke represent? All right. Well, let's get it. Well, I'll just do it this way to make it easier. It's drum 28, but this drum 28 and 48. Let me see. I want to start up. 
I do want to start up. So I want to mention this part. This is perfect. Deuteronomy 28. And 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be as destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of Yahweh thy power to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. And that's the word I really want to look for. What does those jokes represent in who is the is the main representative of, of this image here? Which is is going into it. This curse is a sign upon Israel. Alright? And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. Because thou servest not Yahweh with thy power with joyfulness. And with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which Yahweh shall send against thee. And hung keep this, this exact part in mind. In hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. So we're going to have to go to our captors for everything. All right. Food, water, clothes, everything. He shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Let you know this is going into slavery. All right? But part of that slavery is we have to go to them for our substance, right? So that's the yoke. This is back in Revelation 6. And 6. And I and this says the third seal of famine. This is to let you know that we, we know the scriptures, man. <laughs> and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts, and not Esau don't don't know the prophecies like that. They know things that's past. They can't get into the prophecies like that. To have a testimony, we have a shot, the spirit of prophecy. It ain't for them. And I heard a vo verse 6, Revelation 6 and 6. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measure of barley for a penny. And those things represent what? Your food, your sustenance, man. And it's going to be by measure and, and sold it to us. Well, that's also in the scriptures and, and other precepts. Is he, uh, Ezekiel 4 And 13, and Yahweh said, even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whether I will drive them. Then said I, ah, Lord, Yahweh, behold, my soul have not been polluted. For from my youth up, even till now, have I not eaten of that which died of itself or is torn in pieces, neither came there a bond of flesh into my mouth. Then he said unto me, Lo, I have given thee cow's dung for man's dung, and thou shalt prepare thy bread therewith. So <laughs> the Lord was saying, we're going to eat shit. All right? Amongst the Gentiles. And this is a, literally happened. For one, they recycle your water. The water you piss and shit in. This is what they teach you in school. They recycle this water. You drink it. This water is used your cooking, everything. They do tests constantly on, on food and... Drinks and shit to see how much fecal matter is in fecal matter is in, matter is in there. All right, there is a certain amount of rat hair and poop that's allowed according to the FDA. The FDA allows a certain amount of defects in food, including feces from rodents and other animals, insect fragments, or other non-hazardous, unavoidable defects. There's a certain amount of shit that's allowed in your food. Literal shit. <laughs> and you wouldn't even know it's there. 
Okay? So there you go. 20 hours. Mm. Colorado already drinks recycled sewage water. Who knows if they already bottling this shit. Well, there you go, man. But they've been teaching us this shit for the longest, so. Yeah, shit is bugged out. Anyway, um, they're talking about for other uses. <laughs> yeah, this shit is bugged out. Back in Ezekiel 4 and 16. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem, and they shall eat bread by weight and with care. What did it say? A, a, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And they shall... Then they shall drink slakia, and they shall eat bread by weight and with care, and they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment. Which what? You go to the grocery store, you get a, a, a eight ounce steak, you know. Uh, 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 twenty three point seven floor ounce of water. Okay, <laughs> it's all about weight and measurement, man, and it's expensive as fuck. In America, you barely, you really, especially Israelites, we make enough to survive and get what we need daily. You know, whatever we got to handle and shit like that, man. And that goes to the um, penny part. What am I looking for? I'm just thinking about, oh, yeah. Limitations five and four, and you know, and lot, you know, some of these things have uh, the scriptures manifold. We're gonna take this literal sense, right? Limitations five and four. We have drunken our water for money. You gotta pay to get a drink. Our wood is sold unto us to, to heat your house so you can cook. All that we gotta pay for it, man. Our necks are under persecution. We labor, and have no rest. Captivity, slavery. We have given the hand to the Egyptians. And to the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. No matter how you want to spend it all, we free from slavery. Because the whip ain't on your ass does not make you free from slavery. All right? We were emancipated, which means transfer ownership. Look up the etymology. Well, how you spell etym? E-T-Y-M-O-L-O-G-Y. Look up the etymology. All right? Of the word emancipate. It means to transfer ownership. We were transferred over from private ownership, like to individuals, to corp to uh, uh, industrial and corporate slaves. Man, same shit. Still got the slave owners. They had to feed us and give us drink back then, but now they made a system to where we get reward bucks. You do X Y Z, you get reward bucks, and you got to go to them and get those reward bucks back. For the shit that we need. <laughs> it's all profit for them. Right? This is slavery. Not having your own resources. This is slavery. They own us. They own everything. We don't even have our own shit. We don't even have our own cattle. This is slavery, man. And I want to grab this penny. Um, oh, you know, I remember Paul Star brought this part out. 
you know, he, he went, he did like a refresh on the revelation and he, the spirit revealed something even new to him. So he probably had to break down for a couple of decades. Then the spirit gave him a new revelation, added on to the penny part. I remember when this was brought out. Um, I will do it in the blue letter. In fact, let me do it like this. A penny, denarius, containing ten, a Roman silver coin. It took its name from being equal to ten. Uh, it was the principal silver coin of the Roman Empire. From the parable of the labors in the vineyard, it was seen that denarius. Oh, it, I, the definition tells you right here. Because I, oh, <laughs> I was going to get the verse, but it tells you right here. It was seen that a denarius was then the ordinary pay for a day's wages. And that's the parable. The, they was gotten and, and said, come work for me and get this penny. And that was for the day wage. That was the whole parable. All right. And that was going to us laboring for the kingdom. And no matter if you a brother that's been the truth for a year or you're a brother that's been the truth for 10 years. All right. We working for the same reward, salvation and other, you know, gifts that come with the salvation. The kingdom, all good things dwell. All right. <laughs> so there you go. So this shit is expensive in America, okay? <laughs> it is what it is. Back in Revelation 6 and 6, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. So we got to pay for our food, but then it says don't hurt the oil and the wine. Now this is going into... The truth, all right, the scriptures still being uh, uh, available, man. Even though we're in captivity, the Lord made a way so we can find him, so we can find the truth. Okay? Esau done took the name of the Lord out the Bible. Put a false name there. Etc. But... The truth is still available right here in the scriptures. Okay? For one, it was prophesied they would change the name. And everything else that needs to be there, even the fact they put Easter in Acts. We understand that it's Pesach that was originally there. It's simple. Okay? So, um... Damn, what, uh... You know what? I do it this way. I do it this way. Oh, I mean, maybe this ain't the most efficient way, but we're gonna get there. So we got, we got this example. Now this is the contrary example. This is Isaiah twenty nine and nine. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger not with strong drink. All right, which we know in Sirach forty two twenty four, all things are double. So you got the wine that's getting you drunk while you tweaking. Then you also, which is this is talking about false doctrine. And you also got the true the true wine, true doctrine, which is to make your heart merry, to make your heart glad, our comfort. All right? And we have Yahweh Shai. They call uh, the New Testament what? He said, drink thee the blood of New Testament. But it was wine. Okay. But this is Isaiah 55 and 1. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that have no money, come ye buy and eat. Yeah, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. So the actual doctrine, unlike this food you have to go buy, 
unlike the spiritual uh, uh, understanding of that lamentation we read, was, which is you going to these churches and you paying for your bullshit, the truth is here unhurt, not for profit, not for actual sale. It's without money, without price. Verse 2. Wherefore do ye, do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? <laughs> the, the wood and water is sold unto them, like it said, right? But there's no profit in that. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me, hear your soul, it's like you, hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. All right? That new covenant is but it's written right here. To enter into this covenant, we have to abide in Yahweh Shai, abide in his word. Being born by this word. That's the only way. All right. This is um, this is cold. <laughs> this is a good refresher for even me, you know. I'm not saying that, not he said even me like oh, I'm proud on somebody on level. I'm saying I'm the one doing doing the lesson, and while doing the lesson, I'm being refreshed as well. All right, he that waters water him watereth himself. Just to clarify, you know. Um, damn, whoa. Well, ah, okay. I was just thinking under the precept. I lost it. Uh, what? Well. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Call on him, I was shy. Was Ms. Solomon 9 and 1? Was Ms. Solomon had built her house, she had hewn out her seven pillars. She had killed her beast. She had mingled her wine. She had also furnished her table. She had sent forth her maidens. She crafted upon the highest place of the city. So this wisdom is being likened to being called to a feast. That wisdom prepared for us to eat and drink. Which is this truth. All right. Who is simple? Let him turn in hither. As for him that one understanding, she said to him, "Come, eat of my bread, and drink of and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish and live, and go in the way of understanding." Okay. So this is back in Revelation 6. Oh yeah, let me get some for the oil. Thinking about uh well, you know, let me see. Thinking about the Psalms. I think it's another one. Is it say soft oil or am I just am I adding What's that? There we go. Proverbs twenty one twenty. There is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but the foolish man spendeth it up. All right. Ah, Psalms 141 and 5. Let the righteous smite me, it shall be a kindness. And let him reprove me. All right. Which goes to teach. It shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head, for yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. So what's being reproved, you know, corrected. Isaiah 58 and 1. That's an that's a pleasant oil, man. A pleasant oil. Okay. 
but I want to look up this word for spendeth in 2120. Chalai, 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 chalai. Yeah. Mmm. To swallow down, swallow up, and golf, eat up. To squ- squandering. To destroy, devour. Okay. But a foolish man. Spin it up. He destroyed it. Damn. He don't even use the wisdom. A foolish man don't even use it. Or they're perverted. Mm, mm, mm. They'll squander it or pervert it. That's, that's wow. But the Lord made sure this truth did not get hurt. You know? So, uh, man, back in his Revelation 6, the truth is here. All these other doctrines that's out here. They done took the scriptures and did X, Y, Z, but the truth still is here, man. It's not hurt, and it's free. You ain't got to pay for the breakdowns. Now, Revelation 6 and 7. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. Oh, if it wasn't clear, the black horse represents slavery. All right? And ultimately, who's the ones... The, the face of slavery, the Israelites, man. Okay. But we got this oil and wine. So we, we got redemption. Uh, verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And I looked and behold a pale horse. And his name that set on him was death. And hell followed with him. And that's plain. The fourth beast is death. All right? And the grave is with him. And power was given unto them of the oh, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. And that's what times we're coming in, man. All right? Great death is coming to this place. And it's going to increase. It's great death is already fucking here. But it's about to get worse, man. Second Ezra 16 going to kick in. Second Ezra is, uh, uh, 15. All right. Uh, uh, what's that? Matthew 24. The love of many shall wax cold. Hell, Deuteronomy 30 and 7. These, th- these curses, these things we've been suffering upon is about to uh, be put upon our enemies, man. All right. Great judgment of plagues is coming to this to this place, man. All right, the world will be judged. Uh, Lamentations four, they, the Esau drink of the cup. Obadiah one. Well, of course, Obadiah one. But what is about verse fifteen? Let me grab it. Oh, I gotta make sure I put this on deck. I ended on this. This is Obadiah. One and fifteen. For the day of Yahweh was near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunken upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yeah, they shall drink and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. All right? But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. So the Lord is about to bring great destruction to this place, man. All right? Um, Amos. Amos 5.18. Warns you that desire the day of Yahweh. To what end is it for you? 
The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. And this is not referring to the elect, you know, the believers. It tells us to hasten the day. All right. Actually, the, the Lord returning, the Lord willing with the elect is our comfort. As Isaiah 61. Okay. But you got the whole world wants to know the end. Esau wants to know the fucking end. They, that's why they constantly make movies about it. Hell, Wisdom of Sodom, second chapter, they basically ready to make their move on us just to prove and see if what we say true. All right? And of course, you've got these false doctrines and the rapture, this, all this. Everybody's waiting for the end. But it says what? As uh, uh, the day of the Lord is, is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him. Or went to the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Should not the day of Yahweh be darkness and not light? Even very dark and no brightness in it. Remember. The second beast was the, the, the red horse that was in power. And why was he red? Because of the, the wickedness that's in the earth. Job 9, 24. The wicked is in control right now. And the wages of sin is death. So the Lord is going to bring judgment, man. And part of that judgment is not just the Lord coming down and bringing, you know, that fire. It's more to that. It's what's my Solomon. Chapter 5, um, Wisdom of Solomon 5 and verse 15. I'm going to start at 15. William Solomon 5, 14. For the hope of the godly is like dust that is blown away with the wind, like a thin froth <laughs> that is driven away with the storm, like as the smoke which is dispersed here and there with the tempest and passed away as the remembrance of a, get, uh, of a gust that teareth, uh, slack you, as the remembrance of a guest <laughs> that tarrieth but a day. These things are all quickly forgotten, all quickly disappears, all quickly gone. That's the hope of the wicked. He had his king today is gone tomorrow. That's, that's what's happening to this place. His rulership is through. But the righteous live forevermore. Their reward also is with the Lord, and the care of them is with the Most High. All right? So the wicked is going down, and the righteous is about to be raised up. Therefore shall they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand. For with his right hand shall he cover them and with his arm shall he protect them. He shall take. So these are all the players. Yahweh Shai is coming to redeem those that are in captivity. All right. This current devil that's in power. All right. is about to get brought down by great destruction and death. That's the four beasts. <laughs> or the four horses. Shalakia. He shall take to him his jealousy for complete armor. I think I'm saying through the whole video. I mean four horses. I'm sorry. He shall take to him his jealousy for complete armor and make the creature his weapon. And he, look. Look. What did it say in uh, this Revelation 6? And, power, uh, uh, and I looked and behold a pale horse, his name that said on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. 
These are the plagues that's hitting this bitch. And it's only about to get worse. Okay? So back in Wisdom of Solomon 5, and um, seventeen, he shall take to him his jealousy for complete armor, and make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies. He shall put on righteousness as a as a breastplate, and true judgment instead of a helmet. He shall take holiness for an invisible shield. His severe wrath shall he sharpen with the sword. And the world shall fight with him against the unwise. Teeth the wild beast, okay? Then shall the right aim and thunderbolts go abroad, and from the clouds, as from a well drawn bow, shall they fly to the mark. And hail and hailstones full of wrath shall be cast out of a stone a stone bow, and the water of the sea shall rage against them, and the flood shall cruelly drown them. All right. Hey, when those nukes hit and this earth shake to and fro, there's going to be great uh, uh, hurricanes, man. If the earth is shaking. That means the water on this earth is going to shake. And where, that water's going to hit land with great veracity, man. Yeah, a mighty wind shall stand up against them and like a storm shall blow them away. That nuclear blast. Thus, iniquity shall lay waste the whole earth. And ill dealing shall overthrow the thrones of the mighty. All right. So a lot of death and destruction is, is coming to it's already here, but it's going to get worse. And that's the crazy part. It's going to get worse. All right. And the main bulk of it is going to happen. America is going to get the greatest destruction. But this is mainly for Esau. That's why Obadiah, it mentions the other heathens. But this is mainly for Esau, man. The whole book of Obadiah, that's Esau's judgment. The heathens going to get their portion, but Esau is going to get the fullness of it, man. It says the lob, uh, it says the Lord um lob the head of the wicked, say la. All these nations, the other heathens, they technically they all wicked, they all off. But Esau is the wicked one. If Israel was ruling, the heathens would have followed us. The heathens gonna follow whoever's in power. Esau is the wicked one. He won't do it right no matter what. He brought all this bullshit to them, got them to drink this bullshit wine. He's the head of the wicked. He's the part that's going to get it the worst. You know, it's all just edifying. All praises, honor, glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles, of Great Millstone. And South East Brothers doing this thing in sincerity, in truth, and with charity. Shalom, Wa Baba Ball.